My affinity for blank walls came late in my climbing career. For a while, slabs just reminded me of my days as a beginner, unrewarding memories of my feet slipping on the polished limestone grooves of Seuss. As years passed, I discovered a newfound joy for slab climbing. As of late, I felt I had fully explored my passion, that it had nothing left to teach me. It was a mistake, of course. Sometimes it just takes a break to develop a craving for what is missing in our lives, to rejuvenate what is essential to us. In La Pedriza, I rediscovered the passion, the childish excitement of my early climbing days. I stared around in wonder, granite domes further than the eye could see with the snowy Sierra in the distance, silent witnesses to a now atypical style of climbing, off-balance movements brought to life by intuition and experience. Fits of passion have I known and I would dare to tell But in the lover's year alone what once to me befell was a dancing shadow, she danced into my head. A month later, I went to Bavella in the south of Corsica. The landscape there is one of a Chinese engraving, golden darts of rock and tormented pine trees that bear the memory of the wind in their bark. In 1991, Arnaud, at the age of 20, drew a line on the bare slabs of Tegelice, Octogenes. He had been fascinated by this succession of perfect walls. Had they been slightly steeper, they would have been impossible to climb. Arnaud managed to free the route some years later. He had often told me of an infamous move, a big step on one leg with no handholds that brought him over the crux section of the second pitch. I tried it once without great conviction Back then it felt out of my reach. But as age and patience grew, I sensed that a solution existed and that I should investigate further this perfect blank slab. For thousands of years, it had carefully smoothed and polished itself. So I was willing to devote some hours of my frail human life to this venerable patience millénaire, as the poet René Char would put it. Petit coup de chirurgie aux chaussons. Ah oui, ils ont déjà pris le chaud là. Sinon ça roule. Sinon ça roule sur les gratons là. Ça tient pas. As beautiful and perfect as it might be. Any piece of art has its flaws, its imperfections. To climb, I had to discover and rely on them. Slab climbing is a form of meditation in motion, a yoga of the rock. This bare face on which tiny features forbid me to pull too hard teaches me detachment within action. I must learn to forget about my objective, the anchor, the summit, the send, as climbers say. I know from experience that when success is an obsession, working the route becomes an ordeal. In time I understood that they are the icing on the cake, what we seek and hope for, longing for the fresh and delicious taste of transitional happiness. As we grow older, climbing becomes more thoughtful. The route changes into a poetic path upon which one roams. 
by their inherent purity, slabs beckon us to an abandonment, a simplification of ourselves, a necessary and soothing condition to climb them. Still I have a rose and this no one knows She'll dance on in my head until she herself technical section, if I tighten my will, if I desperately crimp on the tiny crystals, they escape my grasp and I fall. If, nonchalant, I let things be, once again I find myself pathetically hanging on the rope. It's a subtle balance. That's what makes it such a thrilling game. The key is to relax the tip of the fingers to feel what the rock has to offer and to have absolute faith in the feet. To dare to step on nothingness, to be both relaxed and focused, light and precise. I must follow for a thousand feet this tenuous thread and this reminds me of Pantanjali's mantra, stira sukha, steadiness and gentleness. 3,000 years later, the words of the great yogi resonate in my mind as I walk the line on the Tegi Nishi. Lizards are our masters and silent companions. Stoic, they laze in the sun or dart around like golden arrows on the granite surface. Intrigued, they come by to sniff the ropes, our shoes or the bag hanging from the belay. Hours pass and my feet start to hurt. I can't feel the holds anymore. Often in this situation, I think of Chantal Mauduit. In my youth, I learned from the stories of the beautiful Himalayan alpinist to speak as she did to my toes. I cheer them up and, well, it works. As I contemplate the rock, as I climb, I rediscover a certain freshness in my perception of things, a naivety that makes us see beyond and transform what seems to be. On this perfectly blank wall, a foothold is not really a hold. It only becomes one through the climber's faith and folly, a magic suddenly born from the absolute conviction that a solution exists. If I say, or rather, if I convince myself that this is a hold, it miraculously becomes one. Until then, there was nothing there. But if I have faith, I reveal the useful feature. For now, its existence only lies within my mind. I must step up, rely on it, to give it real substance. On slabs more than on steeper terrain, holds are subjective and the relationship we maintain with them is a passionate one. I sometimes feel as if the holds appear under my fingertips. Of course, in real life, I don't have to think so much. I can just say, great, I found a foothold. In French, the word for friction is adhérence. I like that word because it means so much. It contains errance, which translates as roaming, bringing to mind the solid deserts of stone, the harsh navigations of the mirror ocean of granite. The verb adhérer, to stick, is also to embrace. I have embraced the cause of words and stone. If one can use that word as in to join a political party, of that I'd rather not speak, as I feel that there are more beautiful, more important aspects to the word. Adhérer is to become one, to let ourselves go to what is larger than us, to acquiesce to what is, 
to agree with what we are doing, with what consists of our daily lives. One more step and I'll embrace the rock with all my love, with all my might. Pitch after pitch, the time spent at the belay becomes an awaited truce, a relieving halt. Once my partner is secured, my vision widens as I release my focus. At last I notice that the sea has appeared to the east, that the mineral world spreads even farther than one would have guessed from the forest below. I zoom out from the miniature scale of crystals to inhabit the landscape. To see myself in an environment I had left, fully dedicated to the balancing and careful examination of the granite. Without noticing it, I gradually forget myself to become a small detail in the surrounding greatness. Climbing intensely is to train our eyes to be as curious as a child's, to solve insignificant problems, to be able to observe the surface of things that then reveals an unsuspected depth, and on this surface to leave only the slightest mark, a gentle stroke, a paradoxal token of our deep knowledge and profound love. It's here we see the poetry of the Odyssey in these blank walls. From the oceans of stone to the sea Ulysses sailed, the lesson remains the same. Patience, gratuity and fidelity to what we love. The elegant necessity to waste our time and to some extent lose ourselves. Mal <laughs> Climbing arrows of rock, aiming at the moon, I thought that by clenching the holds, I could stay in the warm sun of noon. I thought that by holding on, time would cease to unfold. Climbing spires of rock, hoping to reach the moon, I kept faith for a while, training myself, lifting weights, shattering feathers. I did not see the coming or passing of wrinkling years, so absorbed I was by the rock. I will always caress him, for I believe in the old love that flies with the wings of youth higher each day. But now I yield to the whims of the wind. Go, my heart, lead me where you will. It was then draped at my feet, the cloth of clouds that spread its strange shapes. And the smile of chickadees and the old pine above, gently swaying, life bounded forever by the ropes of love. Of the rock I asked for the moon, and he gave me everything. Pourquoi des lèvres, un penchant pour le 